Max, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to speak about the outbreak of COVID-19 and its impact on the global supply chain. I'm looking forward to the questions that you, the audience, will place into the comments section. Certainly, COVID-19 is causing human tragedy. It is a threat to us as individuals, as businesses, as economies, as humanity. However, I also believe that there are potential upsides coming with this crisis. Many think that COVID-19 is another push towards the end of globalization. I personally believe globalization is a continuous process in evolution and that we have just entered a phase of major transition. I base this view on four trends. First, goods producing value chains have become much less trade intensive. Although in absolute terms, output is growing, much less goes across borders. Second, cross-border services are growing 60% faster than trade in goods. National statistics attribute 23% of all trade to services. If we add the intercompany services trade, the free services offered to consumers all across the globe, and the services added to physical exports, this number goes up to a bit over 50%. Third, low labor costs are not anymore the key driver of globalization. Less than 20% of goods trade is based on labor cost arbitrage. Today, it's much more about investment in tangible, in intangible assets, like brands, knowledge. Fourth, value chains have become much more regionally concentrated, especially within Europe and here in Asia. This thanks to progress in technology, like Internet of Things, robotics, but also due to the fact that the world has become much more economically inclusive. Globalization going digital brings a lot of opportunities through digital services for traditional and new industries. COVID-19 betters the global economy. It has triggered a supply and demand drop that is now gradually rippling through the global economy. The impact is unclear. Estimates vary. Now we speak about, speak about 1 trillion US dollar and many fear that we are entering a recession. The global impact will be significant but unequally distributed across countries and industries. Bigger markets will bounce back faster and the digital economy, the digital economy is booming. This is a historic moment for digital supply chain services. What was the short term impact on supply chains? First, there was confusion, uncertainty, lack of information, lack of analysis. Then came the disruption. 62% of respondents of an ISM survey dating back to end of February, beginning of March, reported shipment delays for Chinese sourced goods. Now we see a wave of shop and factory closings, which halt large parts of the economy. Many people work from home if the IT systems allow this. Logistics network lack load except those that are delivering online orders. Many commercial flights 
have been cancelled. This led to scarcity of airline belly freight and benefits the freighter sector. Blank sailings in ocean shipping and shortages of containers, in particularly reef containers in the West disrupts ports and hinterland transportation. These temporary shocks will teach us a lot about the agility of supply chains. What will the future bring? Today, nobody knows how the pandemic will play out. Many scenarios have been developed. I would like to share two possible developments. First, a more optimistic one that the virus is seasonal and will disappear shortly which allows for continuous Asia economic recovery while the US and Europe risk of consumer spending and corporate investment drop off for the remainder of the year 2020. The second one is more pessimistic. If the virus persists, the Asia recovery will derail and the US, Europe with the whole global economy will experience a deep recession in 2020. Uncertainty prevails. This is the moment for flexible structures and effective management decision-making processes. What are the immediate responses? Crisis management teams have been activated and contingency plans triggered. They are now reviewing the situation, constantly following governmental regulatory guidelines, and they set the priorities. The first priority is, of course, workforce protections. Um, policies have to be reviewed and partially rewritten. Messages need to be defined. Communication channels chosen. People working from home on shifts. And the leadership is required to uplift and support the, the people people that fear to be infected or to lose their jobs. Then there are the suppliers that make the supply chain works, work. And companies need to be close to them. What are their capabilities now? What are their needs? Companies seek inventory transparency, part rationing. It's good to think about minimal production. It was easy to pull the plug, but restarting the engine will be much harder. Customer collaboration is also important. What is the situation? Can customers pay in time? And the customer journey will be rethought. Finally, there's financial stress testing. What are the capital requirements? What is the runway? Companies need to know this for their survival. It's a moment where the ability to deal with crisis, the ability to make quick decisions, and the resilience of supply chains is tested. It's also a moment where we can shift the supply chain paradigm. Global warming has resulted in natural disasters and accelerates the emergence of new viruses. Deforestation drives animals closer to human life, increasing the likelihood that zoonotic viruses make the cross spaces leap. These are clear indicators that we need to rethink our take, make, use, dispose world, that we need to consider building a much more circular economy. This will allow us to mitigate the threats resulting from climate change, biodiversity loss, and pandemics. COVID-19 shows on the positive side that radical political decisions and 
rapid behavior change are visible. Who has thought that people could just be sent home? Who had thought that we could shut down almost overnight major parts of the economy? And also who had thought that we can do so much digitally? The circular economic potential is enormous. Today, only 9% of goods are recycled. It's a moment of thinking about a different way of living, working, operating, and new, much more sustainable business models. How can we build the circular supply and demand system? Circular is a supply chain that enables extraction, handling, production, distribution, etc., of goods without negative impact on the environment, on land, forest, wildlife, water, air. The key to the circular economy lies in product design, production methodologies, and logistics practices. Handling transport and production needs to be CO2 neutral with waste kept in the value creation process. Waste being reused. Circular outputs are, for example, biodegradable waste and products like cutlery and cups, reusable packaging, repairable white goods, etc., etc., and a change in consumer behavior or better consumer preferences would help as well. The biggest driver of the change will be capital challenged into circular production and consumption. A major opportunity for the capital markets. While we keep and try to keep the curve flat in a moment of infection, we should not lose sight on the sustainability curve neither. Thank you, and I'm happy to take your questions.